So today we're going to fit a front bar to a 300 series Land Cruisers. These cars have got more variants than they've ever had before. Obviously we have six trim variants being GX, GXL, VX, Sahara, GR Sport and Sahara ZX. Every single one has its own little quirks and slight differences. Our bar is the same the whole way through, but things like sensor, the length of the sensor loom, uh, radar placement, front camera, everything is slightly different. So I'll try and touch on each step as we go along as to each variant. The most noticeable one is the parking sensors in a GR Sport, for instance, are up in the and slightly different placement over here. So the wiring loom is a different length. Um, on a GR Sport, uh, Sahara ZX and everything, that there's plenty of length in the loom. Um, they also have the front camera. All of that doesn't need to be altered, whereas with the lower ones, a couple of bits need to be extended. We have looms which we're currently making for them, which will be a plug and play loom, um, as we're learning all the differences. Same as this being a GXL, it doesn't have a headlight washer, so we will supply you a blank for that. Um, if it was a GX, we would supply you a blank for the parking sensor hole as well. First step to, to stripping the car, I guess we start in the engine bay. These, these are quite a complex car to get everything out of. These clips go down ways. Everyone tries to do them with a screwdriver. They are the reverse of your common clip. You literally push the middle in and then they come out. Just be careful, they like to fly away when you're getting this trim out. It can be put up out of the way. Then from there, depending on the vehicle, if it had if it had headlight washers, there would be a washer jet here which we would unplug. We're going to undo the three M10s, or 10 mil socket. We would normally, the, the loom on all models is all completely fixed to the grill. So if it had, uh, this one doesn't have a front camera, but if it had, it would be there. That will all be just left alone uh, and untouched as far as the wiring loom goes in the grill. We're going to take the grill and the bumper off as a unit, and then we're going to strip what we need out of it for the front bar. Uh, we'll touch on that step a bit later, but as far as just getting this apart three bolts on the top You've got uh, Three bolts along in here. This will just clip apart when we when we take the bumper off That that's all we need to do in there There's Two to three plugs on this side again. This doesn't have a camera So this one's vacant if it did there'd be another plug there But we're gonna we're gonna unplug them as we're going and then on the bottom the there'd be at least 20 M10 or M6 with a 10mm socket. Screws, we're going to remove everything. So all the trims underneath, the lower bash tray, which is this one, we are going to reuse that. All, every bit of plastic from underneath can be thrown away. We don't need any of it. So I've already done all the underneath. Literally, if it's underneath, it's going. So everything off. And then the bumper will be nice and loose at the bottom. We'll then work our way around to the wheel arch. The flare has got a double-sided tape along the edge as well as it has clips and two um, Allen key um, screws. That little critter, they are Allen key, not Torx bit. From there, you just got to work your way. They, they unclip, Don't be, they are quite tough. Don't be scared. The double-sided tape will come off. It is quite scary. If you want to start at this end, obviously we're going to cut this off. So if you damage the bit where you start, it's not going to hurt. Just work your way along. Get the clip and try and fold it up and it tears the double-sided tape. It actually isn't glued. Most of it will come away, but I find a lot of it has just adhered. Just to give you an indication, we've got clip clip. A lot of these will come out and be stuck in there. You can just put them back home. But yeah, two screws, five clips is in retainers and then all the clips just take your time. They, they are extremely strong. You, you've got to be quite rough to get them off, but don't be too scared. I haven't broken one yet. Next step is this little clip here. Both sides, and then this will start to unclip. Again, feels horrible, but then we're starting to come along. Everything will become loose. You know you've got it right when everything's, you can feel everything starting to come loose. I've still got to undo them critters, so we'll do that now. All right, so starting like I had across there, I'm gonna lift the top grill up off its little holes. Everything's pretty much loose. It'll come across and jiggle off. Because you've unplugged her up here, there'll be, there's nothing left 
uh, holding her on. From there we can just put this one aside, ready to assemble our bar. From here, everything's going. These are gonna get a slight trim just to allow for the upright, so I'll take them off and trim them and then put them back on, so we're gonna remove them for now. So here's gonna go, this whole plastic assembly, which is bolted back here, he's gonna go, the big aluminium brace, which is the 17 mil uh, spanner in here and underneath. That whole unit's gonna go. Um, the little units on the side, these are gonna come off for now. They do go back on, so but so keep your screws, but they're gonna come off. They're literally one bolt and one screw. And they come off from the bottom. They'll make a really nasty noise. However, it's just the clip. It's not breaking it, it just makes a horrible sound. All right, so now that we've removed the big aluminium uh, extrusion, there is a, a stud or a little bit of stuff that sticks out the front of the rail that needs to be cut off and painted. Obviously, I haven't painted it yet. That big plastic unit we were talking about, that's now been unbolted and left. We, we do have a unit that bolts back on there to support the grill later. All the little knickknacks, so tow hooks are gone off the bottom, obviously bash plate as we said, um, the plastics and everything that went with that aluminium extrusion. Uh, there's a tiny little plastic tab that, that was here. We cut off, you can clean up, I haven't cleaned her up yet, but it's not this, just a long little tab that we remove. Um, underneath the headlight here, they have this funky little two little prongs of plastic and I never removed them. Uh, it's up to you. you, you can leave it. It'll just sit against the rubber. It won't bother anything, but it looks tidier if you, if you file them off. Um, they don't serve a purpose anymore. It just makes the, where the bar meets under the headlight, just looks a little bit tidier. As far as those plastic trims, because we're gonna retain a slight bit of bumper here later on in the piece, basically parallel with that end. So when he's off, from that hole down like that. So that's cut one, obviously that's uncut. That's what we need to do and then refit them. It just allows that little piece of bumper still to clip home. Um, but if it has that bit there, it'll, it'll rub on the, on the bull bar over time. I've just got these sitting back here just to show you. So obviously all the top parts not going to interfere. It can keep its original ducting. That's fine. Because the bull bar tape is under, we need to shorten this section up. If you look in the right light, it's a bit hard probably to see. There is like a very faint seam there we go along him and in line with this little slot and up on the angle that isn't too critical if it's a little bit either way it does need a slight dip here because when the bull bars on the upright passes through here and that's where our upright with all the holes and we want we want this bit of the scoop to be directing the air back into it and obviously our fog light hole is right in the middle of here so we, we try and retain what we can being a gx or a gxl or a non headlight washer vehicle none of this needs to change uh, if it is a headlight washer vehicle because the headlight washer moves ever so slightly it's more it's coming in uh, there is a slight scallop that we need to take out there so you, you basically um, just from the end we go about 50 mil just a nice it doesn't need much it's more just the foam hits it but what will happen is your headlight washer in the bull bar will sit unhappy because it's rubbing on that and we don't want it to touch being that these are body mounted the bull bar chassis mounted we want it all to have a little bit of little bit of room, so yeah, just nick that out. This car being a GXL doesn't need it. From here, we are ready to now strip all the uh, tech stuff out of the bumper, like like parking sensors and stuff, and refit them into the bull bar, pre-assemble the bull bar, because at this point, the car's ready to accept the bull bar. So we're going to strip the bumper. Now depending on, again, GR Sport, what variant model you have, they're all slightly different. This one, we've already torn them off. They're a plastic sensor housing retainer, which are going to go get bolted in the bull bar. If you had a GR Sport, they're literally just a hole in the grill. You're just going to take the sensor out and keep it like that. GXL, Sahara, etc. That has the one that's a double-sided tape to the bumper bar, we're going to remove. So we've removed them both. 
these sensors are programmed to that position. You cannot mix them up. So it's a good idea to just leave them plugged in, take the housing um, away, and, and don't unplug them. If you do, number them, because you'll have a world of pain when you're trying to make it all work later. So basically, we're wanting to retain all this in the grill. This section of hard plastic, we are going to get rid of. We're going to, um, you can cut all the little clips and take that off and that, that allows it to be flexible. So when you go to put it back together later, this will all be fouling everything and it's quite rigid. So we, we get rid of all that. However, for now, we're just trying to get it out. So you, you can just cuddle this if you wish, because it's, it's all gonna go in the bin. Uh, just be careful when cutting all this off, obviously. We don't wanna cut the loom. We just wanna get rid of all the clips. It is quite a tedious pro process, take your time. Most of them are zip tied and double sided tape. Uh, these ones, from the fog light, we're gonna reuse this and put a new terminal on it so you can just snip him off. Don't even worry about pulling it apart. But the idea is we're trying to get to here. This one, again, it's gonna go in the bin so you can break it doesn't matter, I'm trying to get it so it's like that. So the whole loom is on the grill. You can, once you're on the bench later, you can literally get a Stanley knife and go along, cut either side of this clip. So that's gone, and then it will just, it will, you do each clip and it'll just fall in half. There is a zip tie and some tape inside of it, but just discard that whole solid section. Uh, another thing not to lose, like what I'm about to, they will not work without them. They're the little insulator, especially if they're a GR Sport where that bolts directly in the bar. If you do it up too tight and crush it, so that's actually getting squashed, the, the sensor will read solid. So don't lose them, very important. It's probably easier at this point to take them all off. Put them aside. Uh, then the grill we're going to separate. So obviously this little clip, it's got to go, got to go outways and we're going to push it like that. So we've got to get in the middle. It's a little hard to do and film it. He's got to go too. So providing you've got your sensor housings out of there, we're going to put that aside. The only bit we're going to want is that little piece there. It's 165 mil of it to be precise. That goes now. say we want to lose that because then this will all be quite workable where you want to route them if you have a Sahara ZX a GR Sport um, this will all be this will be longer this being a base model they're closer together in the bumper they're not going to reach um, if you're one of the lucky ones you're getting one a bit later there'll be a loom which you can unplug that plug in the extendo it's 300 mil long if you're an early fella and you're still waiting you have to cut that. One side's only got three wires, the other side has six. Cut and solder it and extend that one plug. Fog light's got plenty of length. However you wish to, you can cut and solder it, you can put Narva crimps on it, whatever is your, your choice. Re-terminate that ready to go to your steady fog light and then he'd be ready to go. That one you don't touch, that one you extend. As I say, they're different left to right different amount of wires, different colours, different everything. Pay good attention. I'd highly recommend that you heat shrink them. So that, there is two reds, so do them one by one. That side's the hard side, as in you've got six wires, that side will only have three. Get that all prepared and then just put that aside. Uh, if we had a front camera, at the moment you'd unscrew it, it's gonna get relocated onto the bar. If you've got the light bar style bar, if you're a naked bar or a three-inch bar, you don't have to move it. So you just leave it as it was. But if it, 
is a light bar one, you'll, you'll take that out at this point. Again, put it aside. We're going to just run that lead down later. Uh, it's got enough length and stuff to put it to our um, bracket that's on the bull bar. But obviously, you've got to mount the camera in the bull bar at this point. But that, that's done. All right, so now we're ready to dummy the bar up so we can put it on the car. Basically, we're going to just put the wings on loose. You can just nip them up so they're not rattling around. It's just easier to get all the bolts and stuff in and ready at this point. We're going to adjust them later, so don't get too worried about the uh, alignment of them. We've terminated um, our fog light, ready to go to our loom from the grill. Uh, if it's a GR Sport, the, the retaining clip will be a bit different. It's more of a U-shaped one. However, uh, Sahara, GXL, etc., have all got um, this style clip. So that bit that's double-sided taped in your bumper, you will have removed. It's sitting against the front and then we'll put our retaining clip done up so it's all held firmly in place. You can clip your sensor in now if you want. Again, as long as you keep them in order. Uh, I do it this way just so then all you do is plug that in. You don't have to try and um, clip it home in the bar. It's personal choice, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if the car was a Sahara or a VX or one with a front camera basically and it has this style uh, now that the little camera relocation bracket would bolt into those two holes with six mil stainless bolts um, and you would fit your camera at this point. Bar that, as long as you've got uh, your parking sensors in, wings loosely fitted, fog lights fitted, we're pretty much ready to go on the car. If it had uh, headlight washers at this point we would also fit them. They're the exact same process as a parking sensor. Exactly the same. Uh, this one being that it's a non squirter it'll come with the little blanks these will be retained with the same style clip and they will go in like so blank it off they're really neat from the front you will have them color coded to your bar um, and then you'll put your retaining clip same as that on there to retain it and by that you're ready to go on the car So we've set the bar on the car. We're gonna fit it off with all the appropriate hardware. So we reused one of the factory bolts down here. The rest is all new. So these will be M12 by 30. They're a short little coarse thread with a nut on the back. Our big long M12 by 100, which goes through and has the heavy duty washer on the inside, which is down in here. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's a big 50 mil, three mil thick critter. Uh, fine thread M12 by 40 on the bottom, M12 by 30 coarse thread on the top, and then they've all been tightened. You've also got the uh, M12 by 40 fine threads on the bottom. We like to do the bottom up so it lifts the bar up. It's nice if you get someone to hold it in, and then rattle the rest up. You can go through with your spanners, nip them up, make sure they're all tight. We're then ready. We've got the bash plate just set on. These are loose so that we can line the bottom up easily. Now, before we refit our bash plate, you have to cut the snout off. So, that little piece at the front, so just in front of the holes, it's not terribly critical. But that piece gone, it goes in the bin. So it's gonna look like that. We also, there's two little clips which were here. Little, there you go. Then you can reuse your, all your old bolts. That'll, and that, that'll bolt through the same hole as our bash plate and do everything up tight. So stick your little label in here if it hasn't already been put on. So basically then your center is, is fitted off. So that's all done. Now we're gonna come down and align the wings up. 
we're going to do, we're going to focus on this under headlight gap. Obviously, that's just loose at the minute, but we want to get that nice and parallel. We don't care too much about this bit because you're just going to cut the plastic to suit it. However, what we do care about is the tip being in line with the flare once it's cut. So what we like to do, if we put some masking tape on there so we can't hurt it. We loosely clip old mate on here. So what we can then do is gauge if that's at the right point. So we can see that needs to come back a little bit just helps us you only got to have it on with a couple of clips so then we can lift it up get this nice get that good and then while it's on there we'll put some tape so we know where to cut that for later all right so the bar's got holes right through so these can all be done with an impact driver a rattle gun that's why we never fit the, the winch first we leave that till dead last so we're just going to back it off We're going to recut that later, it just lets you cut it to length, just to, so it'll fit on there properly. So now our wings are all done up, we've taken our flare piece back off. Um, our next step is to, in, we're going to fit the bash plates, so we're going to mark the guard liner first. These, are, they bolt into the um, body mount just in there. They rate, they angle backwards. So left and right is different. So how that one is placed is how they go. So this one obviously being the opposing hand, that'll be that one. close to the end now so we've got our bash plates are all on and fixed we've tightened our bolts through this slot they're the m10 by 30s with washers both side and then our long m10 by 100 they're all tight happy then we move up to our little wing infill piece as we said earlier we've trimmed our plastic piece and put it back on we've now measured that gap and gone a little bit less trimmed our little bumper infill so when you're happy with the fitment, you can take it on and off a few times. I like to put a blob of Sikaflex or something similar there. Just because it doesn't have a clip at the end there. It's only got clips along here and it just ensures it doesn't move. So he's going to snap in there. Like that, we put our clip in. You can trial fit your flare a couple of times. Uh, we would have marked it earlier when we had that overlap. Um, and fine tune it, then the same. Refit him. Most important thing is that it all lines up. Make sure that end is nice and flush as we talked about earlier. From there we're going to refit our grill. Now our grill comes with these little grill supports which bolt into the radiator support panel with M6 bolts. Now this will have the little slots that will tuck over the end of the grill. You do have to nick off the two little clips that are here just so that it can tuck around here neatly. So once you've got them fitted, them fitted. Obviously we've extended these like we spoke earlier. We like to sit the grill up there, get your arm up inside, plug these ones in. And then from there, you can tilt the grill forward, plug your lower ones in, so, um, and then also plug your fog lights in. So fog light and outer sensor, grill in, arm inside, plug in the middle sensors, put all your clips and everything in on the top, and then you're pretty much finished. Now we've got 
three top bolts back in, plugged our loom back in. Our grill is sitting in these little support brackets so it's not going to flop around. Um, the loom, however you choose to zip tie it, I like to zip tie it up just to the little uh, um, air intake duct just because it has a convenient hole just to stop it all getting pinched. Um, if you had squirters, I like to route them along this hose here. You can actually shorten up the, the headlight washer um, plumbing, it's way too long so you can simply just shorten her up um, and then route it along there. It doesn't really matter where you route it as long as it's neat, there's plenty of things to zip tie to. Obviously if you were fitting a winch before we did this grill step, you would have sat that in there, bolted it in. Depending on brand, you can normally leave the control box directly on the top because there's plenty of room. Complete all your wiring and then the last step obviously, putting them on top, clipping it home. These, simply clip back the other way, clip back to flush, and then you're done.